Malik, why don't you actually give us some insight on your favorite moments throughout the year, your favorite games um, that really stood out to, for you? All right, so the the first thing this year that really got me hyped and excited was kind of this revival of Paragon. You know, we got Fault mm. and Predecessor starting to come out at the same time. Uh, and it was just like this really niche, uh, like third person action MOBA that uh, had just like a really strong community, like always doing fan art, always thinking of these new uh, heroes. Uh, and it just died off. Uh, they didn't have enough support. And then to see it get brought back uh, through these small indie developers was just really cool to see. The games are still being worked on to this day. Um, they actually just got uh, an epic grant, a predecessor just got an epic grant uh, from like Epic uh, Games uh, mm -hmm. in order to keep developing it. So that seeing them invest in a niche community uh, is really kind of cool. Um, one moment that I just absolutely cannot leave out is God of War Ragnarok. I mean, oh. that that was the pinnacle of the year for me. I, for sure. Was, like, how do you talk? Like, how, how where were you guys? Did you guys watch the actual reveal or did you hear? Oh, about yeah. It? Yeah. No, I watched it live. Well, I fell off my chair and I cried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got and, chills when I first saw it. And like the music's playing and you see the outline of the, the Omega symbol, like, oh, yeah. so well done. Yeah, it, and it really it gave me uh, kind of flashbacks to when they teased the next Elder Scroll, when they made mm. it known that it was happening, just kind of like the very cinematic, like ominous, like you don't know what you're going to get. Yeah. Uh, but I'm really excited. And then, you know, w one big moment that you talked about and Caboose you talked about was Miles Morales. Um, mm. Just yeah. having uh, an African, uh, and this is something that a lot of people don't quite get, is that there's a lot of like, mixed representation where it's very clear that it's kind of whitewashed and it has that kind of uh influence where they didn't put the full effort into recognizing an identity and a culture uh right. and miles morales was uh, this beautiful first step at truly um connecting with culture and identity and representing it uh as it should be and not trying to adjust it to any sort of uh mainstream um, that was really huge for me and a lot of my friends. Uh, it was something that we discussed a lot uh, and kind of what the importance of that game uh, means. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm like holding back. Uh, <laughs> I'm holding back my tears right now just thinking about um, first when they unveiled that Miles Morales is going to get his own game. That that reveal meant so much to me because growing up, you don't have games that have people who look like you. Right. Yeah. And to have an exclusive, a PlayStation exclusive, we all know what that means and the dedication that Sony Interactive puts into that mm -hmm. meant so much to me that when you start to play that game and you start to feel that it's giving you the same feeling as the movie did where it didn't feel like Malik, you mentioned whitewashed. It didn't feel like a stereotype. It didn't feel like a cliche. He's diverse. He's a geek. He's a nerd. He likes hip hop, but that's not him. Liking hip hop is not just who he is. He's right. a beautiful character and they did an amazing job. I, I really can't stress to people. Just play the game. Understand. Talk to people. Understand what that character means because it means so much. People, people really, they, they don't understand how much a character like this and the representation of that character mm -hmm. in something as big as, as like a massive AAA game could mean um, un until they see that, you know? And, and I think that uh, a lot of people have given praise to Insomniac, and and I'll just add on to that praise that they didn't just force this for the sake of getting another Spider-Man game out. They didn't just try like this wasn't the middle of the road Spider-Man to lead into a Spider-Man two. You know, this wasn't just oh let's do something for Miles because we want him to kind of be a character. No, you could see all the way from Spider-Man PS4 um, from the first game that they wanted to do something with this character, and they saw the the importance and they saw also what this character can mean for people 
And they didn't want to half-ass it, not, not in any way, shape, or form. They absolutely went 110% with Spider-Man Miles Morales and you play through that game and you see everything like just from the characterization um, from all that, like all those hobbies, all that, like it's none of it is forced. All of it. It feels natural. It feels yep. real. Um, it feels like something that you could relate to. Um, and a lot of people from, from many different walks of life, even for some of the side characters that you interact with in the game, Insomniac just, they, they wanted to give you a perspective of the real world you know and that i think to its core is what spider-man is the idea of the character since its inception has always been about the idea that anyone can wear the mask there's an interview with stan lee yeah. and i believe it's kevin smith where that's exactly the point the reason you don't see who spider-man what he looks like when he's swinging around and he's doing all these fantastic things is because they want to give you the illusion that you could be that character and someone mm. like miles definitely like solidifies that idea um yeah. and 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 as well just like i said some of the side characters they interact with um i believe the character's name is uh is, is it Haley? um yes. who's who's like like they they provide that representation so well in the game and it's so natural too yeah. i love that stuff that game is incredible yes. um and camille i i love your passion for it as well Absolutely. uh if it weren't for covid I'd give you a big hug right now. <laughs> um, I remember seeing Spider Verse with you at the theater, and 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 like I think the whole world finally at that moment got the idea and got the message. Like this is an important character whose yeah. story deserves to be told. Um, and and Insomniac took what was already such greatness from that animated film and elevated it even further with allowing you to be that character. And I thought yeah. that, that was awesome. It, and it just, could have come at a better time. Um, yeah. It's it, it's it, 2020 was tough being a black person or a person of color. Um, yeah. And with everything that was happening around the world, everything that you're seeing through the internet, especially because with COVID, you can't go out there and like hug your friends. Yeah. Spider-Man for me was something that connected a lot of my friends that are, you know, in marginalized group that are black people of color. It was that understanding of what that game meant that really solidified for me, people in that community and their importance. And there, and for me, when Miles Morales was announced, there was this inherent fear that it wasn't going to kind of fulfill the so many of the check boxes uh, that people of color were looking for. And there was fear that it might just be coming at a time where things are rocky as a cash grab. And all of those fears were set aside when I saw the first gameplay trailer. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it, from the start, made it very clear I mean, it was going to have its mm -hmm. own identity. <laughs> I know. It was, it was just, it's one of those, I think Miles Morales doesn't get enough mainstream praise yes. uh, but i think to marginalized groups and people of color in the gaming community it means everything um mm -hmm. and so i will i'll go on to my next uh favorite moment but yeah miles morales is up there uh the boom of valorant i think a lot of people forget that Valorant mm, came yeah. out earlier this year like it's true yeah it has had an incredible journey from going from being in beta and having organizations and esports organizations and different companies putting on tournaments for a game that wasn't even released yet without help from Riot. And then it released and it had all these big tournaments and now had a hundred thousand dollar or I guess seven individual hundred thousand dollar tournaments around the globe uh, and even put tournaments in regions that often get ignored. Um, it was just really cool. And then the plans that they're going, that they have going into 2021 to introduce uh, League of Legends kind of tournament style where you have the regional tournaments and then you get worlds where all the best teams from around the world compete. I think that the game has a bright future. Uh, and, you know, it, it's frustrating sometimes, I will admit as a casual player, uh, <laughs> but it's maintaining that core as a competitive game so well. Yeah, it's funny because I didn't even think about Valorant being like Valorant, how it is right now. The state of Valorant, how it is, seems like it's been around for a long time. Yeah. And I think yeah. that solidifies the amount of work the team behind that game put in in the community to really have it 
launch and be this competitive game that now has such a bright future. Yeah, yeah as someone, someone that's, who's sorry, sorry. Go ahead, Steve. No, no I was just going to say, as someone that's uh, like outside of the, the Valorant sphere, it's been awesome to see the community come together and kind of latch onto that um, and see it, you know, be successful. Uh, it's not something that you see every year or every day. Like you see games come, and even though it develops a niche audience, it just falls away because people, in the, in the grander scheme of things, just aren't interested or aren't vibing with the game. And it seems like this is one that's going to continue to grow and continue to see support over the next coming years. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say a very similar thing. I was just going to say, like, as someone who's <laughs> kind of on the outside looking in, yeah. like, it's crazy to see the growth of a game like Valorant in this already, like, uh, not necessarily saturated, but very full landscape of esports where you have like League of Legends, Counter Strike, games like that. You see a game like Valorant coming in, and you think to yourself immediately, like, well, is everyone just going to stick to watching Counter Strike? Is everyone just going to stick to watching right. League of Legends? Are they really going to care too much about this game? Is it going to make that much of an impact? And then it does. Uh, and granted, I think a, a a large part of that is Riot and and them being behind the game. Um, and having such like a large fan base for for just their library of games, or I think, what is it specific? They they make League of Legends, right? I'm not. Am I being? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like having like such a large fan base there, you know, clearly that certainly helps. But um, bringing in this brand new game that's very centered around like esports uh, is pretty crazy to see how much it's grown and how big of an esport it's become um and so yeah just just the same with what steve was saying on the outside looking in uh that's such a such an awesome success story yeah and they and they really took the failures of overwatch and the overwatch league and mm. just avoided it completely because i'm not sure if you guys are familiar but for anyone who isn't the overwatch league started out with some community tournaments for the first couple of years and then they just decided to go the franchising route and just uh threw a bunch of money at it these big organizational costs um, and kind of constructed this format that is still evolving to this day. The Overwatch League is in no way, shape, or form mm. uh, in a solidified format. Um, mm -hmm. And this summer, Riot just let the let the community decide how they wanted to host tournaments. Do you want to do best of one? Do you want to do best of three? Single elimination, double elimination? Do you yeah. want to have groups? Do you want to have open brackets? Like, and by them stepping back and allowing the community to decide how we want our tournaments to be run, that's just in my mind investing into the success of the esports. Because if you have to play a format that you don't like, no one's going to want to play that tournament. Right. Right. And and you know what? You're you're reminding me too now in talking about Valorant and the fact that like it was this game that kind of was revealed out of nowhere, released out of nowhere, and is now so big. That reminds me of Warzone. And I'm yeah. sure yeah. Camille, you'd be excited <laughs> to talk about this because like you organize these these Call of Duty game nights with, with your friends. Warzone launched this year. Like it yeah. it this Crazy. this big battle royale came out this yeah. year. And it's funny because um you don't really think like it feel it's another one of those things where it's similar to Valorant where it feels like it's been around for a while. Yeah. Yeah. It's so um, integral, I feel like to the gaming community, it's has such a large community around it of passionate mm. gamers that kind of feel like they've just been around since, you know, yeah. <laughs> 10 years ago. Yeah. Like, and that's crazy because when we think of legacy, um, you know, competitive games, League of Legends is the one that really stands out. So when you have these yeah. brands like Valorant or these games like Valorant and now uh, Warzone, it it's kind of making it more interesting as you try to look through the tunnel to the future to see where they would land maybe in five years if they yeah. will create a name as big of League as League. Mm -hmm. And and yeah. especially like when you look at all the battle royales that had come out since Warzone, right? And granted, Call of Duty is a huge franchise. It was one of those things where it was almost destined to succeed. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you look at like Apex Legends coming out and, and Apex is pretty big, but Apex is kind of stagnated, right? And then obviously Fortnite's remained this juggernaut of battle royales. You see all sorts of different games and different developers trying to capture and recapture the success in Fortnite. And I don't think a game has done it the way that Warzone has, you know, because Warzone is huge now it's to the point where it got so big that call of duty or activision was like 
oh wait, no no we can't move on from this like yeah. we can't just <laughs> we can't just go to the next battle royale we have to keep this one going and they've come to the point where they've integrated the black ops cold war guns into warzone you know and this is probably going to be a game or a mode that lasts for years because of all the success and the amount of people that are playing it now which i i think that's awesome yeah, especially and, for Activision, who, you know, people make the joke all the time that they're looking for that cash grab because they come out mm. with a new Call of Duty every year. <laughs> uh, there are a lot of things that you could purchase in Warzone. So, you know, they're probably making more money with Warzone than yes. ever. Um, Very on but, Yeah, but it's crazy because when you think of, yes, Call of Duty is kind of its legacy brand on its own, but no one ever saw it being successful in battle royales especially after blackout yes. and then the early stages of Warzone um mm. and the competitive scene like no one knew what that would look like but mm. the fact that they took that mantle i would say away from PUBG as that oh. battle royale that you know is really holding its own um for what competitive battle royales could be uh yep. is crazy yeah, yeah and and i think as well because like i think it started with modern warfare because honestly up until yes modern warfare there was some real like call of duty was in a real rocky position it, and there was a reason why a lot of people were like yeah okay call <laughs> of duty whatever uh you know it was starting to just become a meme where it's like oh you play call of duty yeah okay good for you you know like it, and it was uh it was almost becoming like this condescending thing where if you played call of duty it's like weird you know because the games were starting to kind of go downhill and then modern warfare comes out and it's the best call of duty in years probably maybe even of all time um, and then they come out with Warzone, which like just riding the success of Battle Royales and actually doing it well. You know, it, yeah. it, it didn't even it didn't feel like this forced thing where they're like, we need to get a Battle Royale because that's the thing right now. They actually put some time into it and some effort into it. Like the Gulag is something that's I think is super cool. That is like <laughs> such a unique experience to Warzone. The idea mm -hmm. that, yeah, OK, you you just lost your gunfight. You just landed and you died. That's annoying. You don't want to like go back to the lobby, restart. At least you have like one last hurrah. Even if you lose yeah. your gulag, you have like one last hurrah, a fun little experience, a fun little 1v1. And that was, uh, I thought that was awesome. And yeah, they put like a ton of new mechanics into Warzone that we didn't see in Battle Royales that really innovated the genre or like brought some new blood to the genre, which I thought was cool. Um, and, and now like seeing Black Ops Cold War come out, but people still playing Warzone just shows you like yes. how huge that is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And like, yeah, they're making a ton of money off market transaction, but it is free to play, <laughs> which is something like, Fair enough. like those three words free to play. I thought I would never associate with a call of duty game <laughs> in my life. No uh, and, think, and, and so that's one of the biggest surprises of 2020 for me. And also too, there's a, there's a big distinction nowadays is starting at the beginning of 2020. I didn't think this would need to be specified, but now there's a free to play, like actually free to play and then free to play, but you still have to pay for your online subscription yeah. to PlayStation or Xbox mm, and, right. and Warzone is full free to play, which helps it a lot. And it, yeah. it's so weird that we have to think like that now. Cross-platform in Warzone, yeah. that is one of the best yeah. games that utilize cross-platform. Um, it was rocky. It was a journey. <laughs> but I think they really are holding up a standard and an example of how cross-platform could work um, and yeah. influence so many other titles after it. Yeah. And also, Camille, you'll love to rub this in my face. My first article ever on Squad State was that Warzone is the best battle royale. And I stand oh. by that only because PUBG, you have to wait 45 minutes to get into a match. And <laughs> Fortnite, I will never put myself through that. <laughs> Yo, I love okay. it. I love it. We, we meme on Fortnite too, but that's another <laughs> thing that I will give credit where credit is due. Yeah. What they've done this year, regardless of the whole fiasco between <laughs> Apple uh, has been pretty crazy. The amount of licenses that are in Fortnite, it is straight up third-person shooter Smash Bros. There's yeah. Batman, Harley <laughs> Quinn, Iron Man, you know, Captain America, Thor, the Mandalorian, and Baby Yoda as a, as a back bling. Like, the list goes on. The Walking Dead's in there. You know, Kratos. Master Chief, Master yeah. Kratos. Yeah. Like, it just, it just keeps going and going and going. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think that, you know, that's another one of those things that, granted, 
Oh boy, the amount of wallets they've emptied by adding that stuff. Um, yeah. It's still really cool to see that this game, this small game that came out in beta a couple of years ago, has gotten to this point where it is just straight up, unironically, the biggest game in the world right now. Absolutely, it is. You, yeah. It is Fortnite and Minecraft, one A, one B, right now. Yeah. And you even look at the events they've had, like the yeah the Galactus events, concerts, so cool. trailers. They even like screened Inception. Yeah, Christopher, Christopher Nolan, is <laughs> a part of Fortnite, like that is insane. Like you think of the hierarchy of like the most prestigious filmmakers. Right. They're in Fort, you know, they're getting them uh, to collaborate with Fortnite. And that just shows you the power that Epic has. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't know what Epic could do next with Fortnite. Um, I don't know where they go from here. Yeah, seriously, and- it, it has come to the point where it's like, you guys are going to run out of ideas, man. <laughs> like, how many more licenses can they yeah. grab? I bet you, too, they look back on something like their collaboration on getting Batman in the game and stuff like that and probably think, oh, we could have done something bigger here. Yeah, we could have yeah. done something more fantastical that could have brought a little more revenue into the game because what they did with the, the whole season of Marvel mm-hmm. was insane. Like, as a, as a fan of, like, comic books and stuff like that, granted, like, I didn't play because I knew that it was just, it was dangerous for me. The amount of money that I would have spent. <laughs> I didn't play, but like watching and seeing, especially that Galactus event, like you you have Iron Man talking to you, you're getting in the battle bus and Thor is helping you out on the side. You're literally like trying to fight and take down Galactus. That's so cool. Like as a Marvel yeah. fan, that's like a dream experience, you know, and to get it in Fortnite, I think that's awesome. They have done a ton of stuff in 2020 and granted, a dark cloud looming over their head is everything that's going on with Apple. I don't know how that'll end up getting resolved, but that's like that's that's another game that. where we, we all meme on it. And it, I mean, yeah, it's listen, it's all fun and games at the end of the day. But man, it's crazy to see the amount of success that game has had and yeah. what they've done yeah. with that success. Yeah, and yeah. all the and all the additions that they've added to is them just testing mechanics for their next game. They're exactly. just testing out different things and seeing how it yeah. works and how they can implement it into something. Because yeah. with if they handle these brands correctly, they can develop the next Batman game. They can develop, you know, the next. They, there's so many opportunities. This was like Caboose is he's lighting up <laughs> over there. It's like wait, don't wait. There. <laughs> Now, I don't want to go that far, Malik. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, they, they've done a great, they have the audience. If people, families kind of trust the Epic Games Fortnite name. Sure. It, yeah. They've done a great job of building up their repertoire. Um, um, yeah, continue. Uh, just before we go on a quick break with uh, oh, yeah. your list of things. Speaking of games that have just kept going, I'll go through my top three games. All right, No Man's Sky didn't come out this year, but no. it is a completely different game. Sure. Uh, and, okay. okay. Yeah, okay, sure. But does it does it qualify for the list, Malik? Yes, absolutely. Hey, listen, if the Game Awards can nominate Among pers- Us. Yeah. yeah. I guess so. <laughs> it's my, one of my personal top three games. If you won't accept that, I will throw up uh, Valorant up there. Um, okay. Because Valorant's just been a, kind of a love-hate relationship, abusive experience <laughs> this whole year. <laughs> um, I have to talk about Ghost of Tsushima, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, it was just this beautiful experience where literally his world is on fire. Everything is burning. Nothing is going right. And he just has to pick himself up and connect with the people around him. And you find a lot of beauty in the silence and the calm uh, landscapes in Japan. And Sucker Punch did an amazing job. Uh, That's one game that everybody needs to play. And then the Legends multiplayer mode got me so excited for the thought of a potential MMO or MMORPG (laughs) where we get samurais. Please make it happen, Sucker Punch. Just make it happen. I need it. Um, and then my last one is Miles Morales. Um, there's yeah. just no way I can I can end the year without having that on there. What? A, that's a stacked list. Good list. Um, it was yeah. a good year for games. Uh, mm-hmm. Caboose, I'm going to get your insight as well as I'll give my own. Uh, but first, we're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. 